Donkey Kong. This 1981 Smash Arcade hit is one of the most beloved arcade games of all time, and was the springboard for Nintendo's eventual domination of the video game market in the 1980s. It was also Shigeru Miyamoto's first time being the head designer for a game. But there is a dark secret to its development that seems to be a topic Nintendo doesn't like to talk about, and I can't wait to share that secret with you in this video. Let's get started. If this is your first time here at the channel, my name is Tyler, and if you love gaming from all generations like we do here at G3, then consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. You're probably like me and have spent countless hours jumping barrels and knocking down rivets in the original Donkey Kong arcade game. And to put your mind at ease, this may just be the first Donkey Kong video where Billy Mitchell isn't the villain. We all know that Donkey Kong was Nintendo's first big arcade hit in the US. I always assumed Nintendo developed this quirky platformer all on its own, but while I was doing some research about the history of Donkey Kong, I came across something interesting. Just take a look at Donkey Kong's Wikipedia page here. It says the game was developed by Nintendo R&D 1, which was led by Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpei Yokoi. But if you squint, you'll notice there's a tiny superscript in the corner that when clicked says, Programming Assistance by Ikigami Sushinki. Since Wikipedia isn't the most reliable source, I decided to dig a little deeper into this. The Ikigami Shusinki Company, or ITC, is a broadcasting equipment company founded in Japan in the 1940s. During the 70s and 80s, they also took part in arcade game development. ITC made a deal with Nintendo during the 70s to develop and manufacture arcade games for Nintendo, which ultimately included eight arcade titles. There are arguments as to the exact eight arcade games they programmed, but it's definite that ITC designed and developed the 1979 Japanese arcade hit, Radar Scope. Radar Scope is a space shooter that is basically a mix of Space Invaders and Galaxian and was very successful in its Japanese release. So Nintendo of America president Minoru Arakawa saw an opportunity to break into the US arcade market and placed a large order of Radar Scope cabinets for America. By the time the cabinets made it to the US, the hype for Radar Scope had went down dramatically, and it never captured a real fan base in America. So Arakawa was left with a huge number of unsold Radar Scope machines. Arakawa's father-in-law, who just so happened to be Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi, wanted to design a game quickly that could be installed and repurpose the large inventory of unsold Radar Scope cabinets. Yamauchi appointed a young designer who had assisted with Radar Scope named Shigeru Miyamoto to take the lead in designing this new game. Now around this same time, Nintendo had been trying to secure the license for Popeye for an arcade title, which centered around the love triangle of Popeye, Olive Oil, and Bluto. Nintendo failed to get the license, but Miyamoto admits he took the basic concept of that game's storyline to create Donkey Kong. Now I want to be clear that I am in no way disputing that Donkey Kong, Jumpman, aka Mario, or any other concept for Donkey Kong wasn't created from Miyamoto's vision. And any regular here at the channel knows I have much respect for Miyamoto and Nintendo. But the rest of Donkey Kong's development story is where things get a little cloudy. Since ITC programmed and developed the hardware for Radar Scope, it's logical that Nintendo hired them to develop Donkey Kong as well. The GDRI states that ITC wrote all the code for Donkey Kong, and sold Nintendo anywhere from 8,000 to 20,000 Donkey Kong printed circuit boards. This entailed a lot of man hours, and was speculated to have taken four programmers approximately three months to create the game based on Miyamoto's design. Donkey Kong became a phenomenally successful hit for Nintendo, and by 1983 it had made over $280 million in sales. So Nintendo got to take all the credit and profits for the game because they had no official contract with ITC rightfully crediting the company as the programmer of Donkey Kong. And to make matters worse, Nintendo allegedly copied an additional 80,000 boards without ITC's permission. Because the original game was so successful, Nintendo now wanted to create a sequel for Donkey Kong. And since they didn't own the original source code, Nintendo hired Iwasaki Geekin to reverse engineer the original Donkey Kong created by ITC so Nintendo could develop Donkey Kong Jr. without the assistance of an outside developer. This was the last straw for ITC. They sued Nintendo in 1983 for 580 million yen, which is around 92 million US dollars, for copyright infringement since Nintendo didn't own the original Donkey Kong code. 
They battled in the courts for seven years, and in 1990, a Japanese court ruled in favor of ITC and agreed that Nintendo did not own the original source code for Donkey Kong, with the parties eventually settling out of court for an undisclosed sum. And to further prove that ITC had a big hand in the original Donkey Kong, just check out this hidden message the ITC developers buried in the code. And this same message is found in the code of Sega's Congo Bongo, Zaxxon, and you guessed it, Radar Scope. These same arcade hits all contain the ITC logo in their ROM tile sets as well. I was completely taken by surprise with this research and it's a pretty huge revelation to me. Just think of Nintendo would have had to share the Donkey Kong profits with ITC originally, because Arakawa used the profits from Donkey Kong to purchase land in Redmond, Washington for the Nintendo of America headquarters that stands today. And Donkey Kong's success launched the career of Shigeru Miyamoto, and it may have stolen a little bit of his professional thunder at the time if it was widely known that a good chunk of the development work was contracted out to another company. But in all honesty, I'm glad things worked out the way they did because I couldn't imagine a world without Miyamoto's creations like Mario and my beloved Legend of Zelda. If you loved the original Donkey Kong and were as shocked as me finding out this dark secret, then give this video a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Special shoutouts to Question Block Gaming and Beer Bourbon and Games for finding Mullet Boy first in our last video. Till next time guys, G3 out.